Welcome back to Night. Last time, well, we used most of our time with uh, dealing with Ming, more or less, kicking, uh, kicking Queen, Kushan, and Shou's asses. And we'll most likely do the same this episode, although we will be taking on the Horde and also Swahili as well. So I'll just get these guys into position. We'll be getting, uh, we'll be getting our well, our diplomats back home because they use forever to actually do so. And I suddenly, yeah. Castile is down here, so I should potentially take a little bit of a peaceful nap, I guess, and get myself in position now for westernization, because I'm pretty sure we can. But first I'll be declaring war on Swahili, we'll be trying to take uh, most of these lands here to basically block in uh, this area here, so that no one else can actually take it from us, because I don't want the Castile, or anyone else for that matter, simply come in and bomb take what uh, I look at as mine and also the fact that I now have saved up a lot of money uh, basically means that once we actually start wow they, they actually do have an amazing amount of troops these guys but yeah as I was saying the fact that I now have saved up uh, money means that I can have a level 3 admin guy and hopefully I can get this done while this guy still is in charge since he has full admin the air has zero so it's kinda risky actually to go ahead and try and westernize but I'll go ahead and uh, and try it even so. We can also boost our military uh, tech, we'll do that. Combat with increase by 1, artillery fire by 1.0, and artillery shock by 0 0.10. We also have some new cavalry that we can use now. Musketeer cavalry, doesn't matter for this stack though, since it is a stack of, uh, of mercs. I think I should put a general in charge there, simply because of the fact that they are running away and they're running rather fast. But, uh, as I said, the point being here is that we will be uh, most likely now declaring a, uh, or trying to get ourselves westernized as soon as we get the border with Castile down there. So, uh, with that in mind, I think uh, we'll just wait for that the colony to be done, I think, and then we'll get the uh, the Castilian border. These guys are kind of, kind of very good at running, it seems. So that's kind of annoying. Yes, I said it, but I'll be dealing with Swahili, and then I will be moving my uh, my troops, I think towards uh, Sho and Tibet and uh, no sorry the Horde Shun and Sho and I can act I can actually do that right now uh, the only thing that I am a little bit concerned about here is the fact that uh, that uh, manpower is starting to become kind of an issue but we should be fine so I'll be declaring war we'll be moving a lot around these guys are actually patriots that are uh, loyal to me it seems so I can potentially use them to my advantage but I'll be moving uh, I'll think these guys are enough to uh, to keep control over the northern parts and simply keep them at bay and I'll be using these guys to take uh, take down show here so I'll be moving these guys down here these guys I think are actually pretty good placed so I'll just uh, deal with Swahili and get or wait for my guys to be uh, ready and we'll declare war I decided to go for Shun first, simply because of the fact they are annoying, and also if I'm lucky I can destroy their troops and allow these rebels to run free, siege everything here before the war is over, so I'll be basically be taking this area up here, and quite possibly their capital. And this should basically be a better bet than anything else, so we'll be going for that. So build it, doesn't matter, with the westernization soon on my doorstep, I can go ahead, reduce and boost a couple of points, not a problem at all. And I'll simply start sieges, I think. That is probably the easiest thing to do. So uh, we'll put 3,000 men there, 3,000 men there, 2,000, 2,000, and I'll send these guys to kick uh, the Shun army's ass, which is, well, they actually have quite a big army. Uh, the only question is, where is it hidden? I, I have actually no idea where they, these guys will actually go ahead and hide their army, because it doesn't make sense that they have. Yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> a double hit of bad luck here, uh, as you could see. Uh, the fact that I now have an air that has uh, that has zero admin points as well puts me in a fairly bad position. But he, both of them are actually likely to die, so that's good. But just to try and speed it up a little bit, we we'll make uh, the air a general, and that should uh, help out with him his chances of dying, more or less. I have a feeling that the Shun army is somehow stuck in deep Thai beat or something. It doesn't make sense for it to be stuck anywhere else. So I would put my money on that it's uh, it's hiding somewhere or in 
somewhere around there. So uh, for now, deal with these rebels, and then we'll be uh, we'll be on our way to more warfare. Apparently, it seems that uh, it's kind of difficult here to get things going or war score high. So what I'll be doing, I think, is trying to uh, to bribe these guys out uh, one way or another, and. Apparently, as you can see, that requires quite a lot. So we'll be trying to hunt down that Tibetan army, and if that works out, we should be able to get the peace deal that I want here, which is basically just these three provinces here. But we'll see what we're able to uh, to pull off. Also, it seems that uh, these guys are basically ready to give up what I want, which is which are just these two provinces. So I'll be taking that. It seems that I will get some more aggressive expansion with Castile and the Ottomans, though. So they do not like that, but I will also be taking a little bit of cash. But there we go, deal has been made. And with that I'll be coring these two uh, basically instantly. We'll be keeping this army here for, uh, for reference or basically protection in this case. And hopefully I can get myself westernized before too long has passed more or less. So uh, we'll see how it all turns out. can also upgrade or build up my army a little bit it seems. So I'll probably do that too uh, pretty soon, uh, hopefully. There's no reason really to drag out this war any longer than I already have, and I th can of course take some provinces here without too much uh, problem, so I think we'll actually go for uh, for just that. War school wise, Venso, nope, uh, let's see, Fuso, nope, I think I'll actually go for, I think I'll actually go for Venso, because I believe this one is already sieged, yeah, it's occupied by our patriots. But I, d I don't actually understand how this actually worked, because... As you can see, yeah, these guys have the main symbol, but the provinces they occupy are hand patriotic. So I have no idea how it actually works, but for now I'll simply go for these three provinces, and we'll have to we'll have to figure it out later because I handed it to the wrong country. What the hell? Good going, me. Good going. Ah, oh, my apologies. That shouldn't actually be possible. Still, I did it. So yeah. That's that. Show you uh, basically now put yourself on my list of misfortune thanks to the fact that I messed up. Yes, I do have. But I'll be waiting a little bit, uh, I think. I'll be I'm a little bit unsure what to do now, so uh, I'll get back to you in a second with what uh, we'll actually uh, we'll actually do. I haven't really figured out what to do, but thanks to me messing up the uh, the uh, troops here, I had to send them back to get them the. Uh, what should I call it? The uh, it's actually hard to actually give it a name. The exile, more or less, and uh, that is an annoying procedure to say the least. Uh, I've no idea how many men these guys actually have, but oh, they do have substantial amounts. So we'll be moving our troops around over here. But I have a feeling that the reason why these patriots doesn't actually work as I would believe intended is mostly due to the fact that they are all uh, basically. Uh, Harm patriots and both of these, or all three of these nations that are currently uh, surrounding them, do all use the exact same, uh, or actually has the exact same primal culture, and that is currently what is uh, what is uh, screwing everything over, making it uh, making it a mess. So hopefully uh, it'll sort itself out somehow. I do doubt it, so so uh, for now, I'll just be getting sieges going, and we'll see what uh, what we end up we end up with here. So yeah, the war was going pretty well before I decided to... Well, anyways. Uh, as you can see, there are some rebels here that are basically causing some troubles here. But Champa, Eratord and Sean are the participants. But even so, it shouldn't actually be a trouble. I'm pretty sure Khmer can actually handle Champa on their own. And uh, we'll probably take a province or two and hand them over to Khmer if we can. So uh, I'll be putting that or leaving that in their hands. Other than that, I will be moving on trying to destroy this army. Because if I destroy that... I'm basically free to send as many armies that I want up north to uh, start causing trouble for uh, for the others. So I'll be finishing sieges I guess and then we will be moving uh, our troops up to get the three provinces that we want from the Oirat Horde. And just for you, just to check, I want to check what the uh, Ming, Ming and Ming, making sure that everything there is Ming and not Shun, Shan or uh, something else. As you can see, we are going to get those three in this war uh, handed over to Ming, which is the goal. And we should also move some troops up there rather fast, I see, thanks to uh, thanks to the fact that you guys are not supposed to move. You guys are supposed to finish the siege. So yeah, I'll be finishing these sieges, I think, and then I'll be moving, using this unit, move it up uh, north and take control with, uh, with that. 
Hopefully it will work out as intended, but uh, it could we could get hip hey uh, hip ups hiccups. So we'll see how it goes. We're also going uh, well. I say pretty well. All right, Horde is under siege. We have a lot of troops in the area, so it shouldn't actually be a problem. We're still making an awful lot of cash. Still don't know why really. Uh, I have a f my force limbs are growing pretty damn fast now though, so uh, I should go ahead and build up my armies. That is for uh, for certain. So what we'll be doing now is trying to hunt down rebels in my or mainlands, everything. Shell has gotten back some of their provinces here, which is good. That means that I will basically be about done with uh, with Ming at a fixed point. I'll probably also next time we end up in war with Huang, take Korea and release them, and then basically grow them and X, rinse and repeat, and then we'll probably actually get or start them hiccups, get started with Japan. And that should actually be easy thanks to the fact that we can mostly release vassals on the entire entire thing and we can probably just release two or three big uh, nations that will serve as uh, mostly as well uh, vassal keepers I guess I could call it but uh, we'll have to see as at this point we are slowly growing slowly getting our border I have however forgotten to vassalize uh, RGS so we can do that straight away there we go Vasi <laughs> Vaziel Algiers has been vassalized and I can next them. Also Sicily has apparently become free. So I really should go ahead and build myself a um, a transport slash uh, battle fleet here in uh, in Europe so I can start gaining some lands. So we will be building, it'll just be a small fleet but it'll be big enough or good enough to defend itself and if I can at least take or vassalize uh, Sicily here that should be uh, that should be a good start. If I can then get it myself into a war with... Nope, I do not want to get myself into a war with Aragorn, but if I did, I could take Malta and hand it over to them and uh, grow that way. But we'll have to see, because apparently it seems like we're getting, uh, to some extent, a game of big uh, big beasts here. The only exception to this seems to be Spain, uh, Switzerland, Austria, Bavaria, Bohemia, Flanders has... Uh, basically, it seems that the Holy Roman Empire is starting to consolidate into a flurry of uh, a little bit larger states, Milan, so forth. So we'll have to see. My, Italy might be our entry point to Europe, but uh, it all depends on how things uh, actually turn out. We still have plenty of time, so it's not really something we have to decide here now. But we only need these three provinces, then we have taken uh, everything we need from... Sh or one from show. but for now we will be hunting down and trying to destroy the... Uh, the uh, uh, well, or retort and get the three promises for them. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> One of the funniest things that I've just noticed is that even if I have an army that is in exile, I can actually just launch it into a promise that I am currently occupying, and it will be de-exiled. Yes, you heard that right. I can actually instead of send them home. Or into a vassal ter or one of my vassal territories, I can simply send them into occupied territory. That works just as well as any r any random home uh, territory at all. So I don't actually have any problems anymore with uh, with that. I think so. With that in mind, I think I also should get these guys home because I think this war is basically all this. Uh, yeah, we are basically done here. You guys can set the course for home, so you won't get yourself into a bind in terms of... Uh... Well, it doesn't really matter, because I can still march these guys down to show, so we'll simply go ahead, make the PC we want, which is a growing Ming, three more provinces, and you guys will all have to march down to show, so that I can actually get the, uh, the things that will get stuff going, so to speak. But for now, I will simply be harassing their troops, making sure that they can't actually uh, siege what they want. And then I will be uh, basically set to uh, to making the peace deals that uh, that I want here. But we'll also be dealing with rebels, most likely trying to rebuild or build up the 20,000 men that were missing from my armies. And then we'll uh, consider westernization. So I'll just finish or get these guys done, get my peace deal in order, and then I'll get back to you. There we go, everyone has been uh, the exiled, which be means that I can be making the PC that I want here. Unfortunately, I can only take two, three provinces this time. So we'll be going for Jiangman, uh, Hainan, and also Changsha. So we are, well, we are definitely making gains here, although it's going rather slow. So uh, as you can see, Ming is uh, more or less uh, almost complete now. Some rebels should, I'm a little bit pissed that rebels don't actually work, but uh, we'll see if we can make some gains. I'm probably, I'm kind of uh, suspecting that the reason why it's actually not working is thanks to the fact that uh, that I made them 
that I made them, uh, what's the name of it, uh, now I'm stuck, uh, that I made them, uh, damn how stuck I got, but that wasn't the point. As I was saying, the problem here is basically I think that I made them sunny, that I force, forcefully changed their religion, and that is why I can't actually, all the rebels won't actually uh, concede the lands to them, rather than, uh, rather than uh, someone else. So hopefully uh, I'm right there, but well, I, I'm a little bit unsure. I'll have to do a little bit of checks, a little bit of testing, and see if uh, if I'm right or not. So it's a little bit annoying, but still, at least Ming is almost back to full capacity. And once I've actually uh, annexed Ming, I'm pretty sure that I will be uh, set to, uh, well, do mostly whatever I want. So uh, for now, there aren't really that much I can do. Persia still has a weak personal union with Delhi. That's a little bit interesting. Let's see. Dynastic, royal marriage. Can I get lucky now? Personal union with Knight. How old is this that guy? 21. So, uh, possibly not. Then, since Sunnies actually have an extreme high rate of uh, childbirth, that won't actually help me, I think. It'll at least a good try. But, yeah, we'll be seeing how this turns out, and hopefully I can, uh, I can snatch them up, so to speak. But at least once I actually integrate Ming, I'll be able to vassalize, I think, even Delhi, Persia, uh, quite possibly. Not Probably not Persia, though, but most likely Delhi here. If I can vassalize them and Bengal, for example, yeah, after I take in Ming, I will be mo most likely able to vassalize uh, these three here, and that will basically be a lot of land. I'm a little bit unsure if I'll be, I will be big enough to... Uh, no, the rivalry will be too strong for too long. Same with the Mamluks, I think. No, can I actually get these guys vassalized if I'm nice enough to them? Potentially, so we'll see how that turns out. Swahili? And no, you, don't, you do not like me that much, so... That is a good explanation for that, but uh, yeah, we are closing in on... Uh, on uh, the border here. If not, we'll simply have to annex Algiers once the time comes, which is uh, in eight years' time. So we'll see if we can uh, get things going then. But as I said, I want a good admin guy before I westernize. So uh, we'll have to do a little bit of thinking, a little bit of uh, a little bit of uh, well, how should I put it? Uh, calculations, uh, measurements, and so forth. I I don't know what to call it, but even so. If I'm lucky, as I said, I'll be able to take in uh, this area here, mostly through vassalization, if I'm really lucky. But uh, I, do, I, do, I won't actually count on it, so we'll see how it goes. Thank you for watching. Please leave a comment, praise, criticism, anything you feel like. And I'll see you around next time. Bye.